Well, my friends, it's March the 7th. I think I'll take a moment to pay homage to my ancestors and thank them for all they've done for me. And take another moment to pay homage to the sun god that rises higher in the sky every day and brings warmth and life to the earth. It's a wonderful thing to be alive and to have this day to enjoy. Now, my friends, let's see what we can do of value today. Back in a minute. And here we'll take a, a moment to say hello to our best friend. Hey, Missy. Going to have a good day today? I think we are. <laughs> Such a little sweetheart, you know. Okay. Back in a minute. The Vikings exploded okay, my friends. Sea, like Something that's absolutely necessary to shooting a bow is having strength in your shoulders. So I'm not going to show you a whole bunch of exercises today, but I'm going to show you some that are shoulder specific and will help you. And a little thing like this is springs. You can get them on uh, eBay or Amazon. Uh, they're very good. So all we have to do is stretch them out. This will give you much more strength because basically stretching it out is what we do and revealing for the first time okay how the vikings truly lived and died one time i was over at the uh, archery club where i go and there was a fellow there that was a personal trainer he was in really good shape he had come down and bought a bow now he didn't have a lot of experience but i'll tell you he was hitting that target really really good and I came to realize that why he was hitting that target so good was because of his strength. So what I'm going to show you is a few shoulder exercises that will help you. You know? Stuff like this. That's how you'll do it. And this simple spring, it will allow you to do quite a few different exercises. But this is what will give you the strength to be able to stretch that bow out and to be able to relax because if you're not stronger than the bow, you cannot relax. And of course, they only drew about three inches or something. Yeah, so it's really important One of the wonderful things to the do these types of exercises. Their great personages okay. was to bury them in their ships with all the implements because they felt that they were then going deaf. Could you imagine having more fun? <laughs> uh oh, there's business. Anyhow, I'll be back. been a great battle, a great sea battle near the Isle of Svolder between Sven Forkbeard and Olaf, King of Norway. Sven prevailed. Olaf is no more. Let me tell you the story of what happened on that fateful day. Olaf had become a Christian and then he invaded Norway and killed Hakon, King Hakon, good King Hakon, and put his son Eric to flight. When Sven heard this, he felt that he had been robbed by Olaf. Sven is a very dangerous man. 
He's responsible for the death of his own father to take power. A true psychopath, but a great Viking, a great warrior, a great statesman. Sven went to King Olaf of Sweden and they prepared a trap for Olaf. What they did was get Sigvaldi to join Olaf so that he had more ships, but really Olaf only had 11 ships. Sven had 71 ships. Sven lay in wait by the isle when Olaf passed. They set the trap. Sigvaldi sped away and left Olaf, who very bravely lashed his ships together. They lashed all 11 ships together. That shortened their front. Allow me to show you what happened. Get rid of some of this hardware here. This is how, this is how the battle went. We have the island up here, and we have Sven, and Sven has tied all 71 of his ships together in a big line. All the ships are in a big line. Now Olaf ties his 11 ships together here in a smaller line, okay? Now, Olaf, they get out their spears, they set their oars out, they set their yard arms out, so it's like a little porcupine, you see? And now, the Swedes and the Danes cannot really do more than attack in this area right here so it nullifies them it's just one to one so the fighting went on all day it was pretty rough going anyhow then Eric took his ship the Iron Ram that's the son of Hakon Eric took his ship and he went around and attacked Olaf from the side that's the flank. They just rowed as hard as they could. They smashed through the oars and they got their ship up against this one. And now they started fighting. So they, they fought through this ship and then they fought through that ship and that ship and all these other ships started to come around the sides. And now Olaf is stuck in the middle. So as the day progressed, they kept on fighting their way along. Now, they were exchanging volley after volley of arrows. Lots of arrows were going back and forth. Olaf had a great archer, and he tried to kill Sven. So Sven got his best archer named Finn, and Finn shot his arrow and knocked the bow right out of the hand of Olaf's man. They continued on fighting until there was about 500 left, uh, 500 of Olaf's men left, and they just started to get exhausted. They were getting killed. They were outnumbered. They lost. And in the very end, Olaf, rather than surrender, took his sword and his shield, and he jumped overboard and committed suicide rather than be captured. Now, that's the... Battle of Svolder, but that's how it happened. 71 ships against 11 ships. And after the battle, Sven, Eric, and Olaf of Sweden divided up Olaf's lands. And that was the end of that. Anyhow, uh, I'll be back in a minute and I'll uh, do a little talking about archery. Volley after volley, it was great. Hello, my friends. For you that like weapons, 
This is the uh, Scottish Claymore. Now, you can see it's got a long handle, and it's hard. <laughs> I have to get way back so that you can, if you can even see it, you see? Uh, it will let me reach out about seven feet. Very much like a spear, but when you start swinging her, you've got a good reach. Uh, they weren't a common sword. They were used by the house carls around the uh, Scotch King for the main part. It's a great uh, anti-horse weapon. So this is it. Now, when it's standing on the... So, I'm, uh, I'm 5'11", okay? So you can see that this thing is probably, you know, five foot six, but my arms are, you know, two and a half, three feet long. So if you start poking with this guy, you've got about seven, seven and a half feet poking right in the eye. It's a neat weapon. Anyhow, that's for you guys that like looking at weapons. <laughs> now, there's a, one other thing that I'm going to say. Um, I've come across a, a guy, uh, and uh, he seems like a, a nice guy. I, I respect his shooting quite a bit. So I'm going to turn you on to him. Uh, the reason being, he's very good at aerial targets. And uh, he can show you how to make uh, little target throwers and ball throwers and uh, uh, things like that. Uh, but he's very good at aerial targets. So I think that if you watch him, if you're interested in that kind of thing, he's a good guy to watch. Like I say, he seems like a nice guy, and uh, he, he's articulate. So uh, his name is James Jean. James Jean, J-E-A-N. And uh, he'd be worth watching. Anyhow, I'll uh, get rid of this stuff and come back and... We'll do a little talking about archery. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, my lord. The weather's changing. The sun's going down at 6.15 today. Three more days and they change the hours. And then it won't be getting dark till about 7.15 or 7.20. It'll be great again. Until then, we're inside and uh, in the Great Hall. Anyhow, rather than shoot and say, oh, see, I hit the target, you know, I'm going to discuss three distinct ways of lining up and aiming today. We'll just talk about it. This is theory, and if you listen, uh, you'll be able to distinguish between the different movements in the form that we're taking Anyhow, uh, one is the, uh, the, the seven-eighths roll. Number two is the lean. And number three is the stretch it out. That's what I call it. Now, the first one is we will put the tip a little bit on the right looks like left to you but you know a little bit on the right because I find that when you push you know your arm straightens out a bit see and it just goes there so I'll start a little bit on the right as I draw back when I get right back to I say seven eighths but you know almost back to my anchor which is there by my lower back tooth, but almost there, the bow is stiff enough. There's enough pressure in the bow that if I allow my hand to roll, it will just roll into place and be under my eye. So that's one way. Push it on, draw almost full, and roll it on. Now, the second way works really, really great, and it's simply the lean. Now, the lean, you see, if I, have, if I have my hands up like this, you see this hand is to my right or your left, okay? 
but if I lean at the waist far enough, do you see how the hand goes in behind the other one? Now they're kind of lined up. So as long as I lean far enough, I can get that straight, one behind the other. So we don't have to, you know, lean as far as I'm just doing to, to show you. But it would be the same thing. We place our feet, we put the arrow a little bit on the right, and as we draw back, we just lean at the waist until it's under my eye, my finger is in the same anchor, and off it goes. So it's a, a, a really great way of getting the up from under look, 90 degrees to the target. A little bit on the right, and just lean until one hand goes behind the other, and you're at your anchor and it looks straight. It works great. Now, a third way is we stretch it out first. So, in stretching it out first, exactly what we do, we, we simply look at the target, push the tip on, and we just pull back and relax our arm until they just fall one behind the other without us looking, you know, like, I mean, we are looking, but I'm saying that you, you can have your head even over here and do it, but, you know, it's better if you have your head closer. But uh, anyhow, in doing this one, again, uh, it relies, again, on the bow being all stretched out and straightening you out. You're relaxed, so you fall in behind the bow. Anyhow, you'll push it on, and you'll bring your arm right back. Let's say your my head is over here, but right back, and I just let it relax until my right arm is hanging off the string. And now I'll move my head over and line it up. If I have to, I can adjust it a little bit, but basically the pressure is what makes it go straight, and now we'll line it up. So <laughs> without having a shot a shot, uh, you've seen three things. So again, for the seven-eighths rotating draw, we slightly on the right, draw it back when the pressure gets so great, we simply allow it to roll our hand into our anchor. Then the other one works really, really great, and that's the lean. Again, as we draw, we simply lean until it's straight. And then the third one is allowing the pressure to do the aiming first, and then aiming. So it's pressure, let it f fall in line like it's pointing at the target, and then just get over there and make sure it is pointing at the target. Anyhow, uh, you know, that's about it. Like I say, uh, I'm looking forward to this two days from now when it's not going to get dark till about 7.15 or 7.30 and the temperature is going to go above freezing for the first time in a few weeks. So we're going to try to get outside and enjoy the field. You know? Enjoy Mother Nature and all the wonders of everything. Anyhow. <laughs> I'll talk to you in a while. Okay, my lord. Let's see if we can demonstrate what we've been talking about. So, always keep your feathers close to your hand. Now, the first style that we're going to do is the 7 8 roll. In other words, getting it right back to around here and rolling. And uh, in doing that, uh, we're not going to be really leaning. We're not really going to be moving our head around. We're kind of just rolling it into place. Also, for all of these three draws, uh, if I can explain my way of lining up, 
so basically, uh, you know, you're the target. So now I've got my arrow down here near my waist, but it's like a pointer on a compass. I can see where it's pointing. But I'm going to hold it up higher so that you can understand. So anyhow, again, the arrow's down by the waist, but what I do is I point the arrow at the target. Like, I, I don't care where I am. I point the arrow at the target, and then I move my feet so that I'm in a natural position. I move my feet to the left of the arrow, and also I start to line up my jaw with the target and the arrow. So the first thing is actually I point the arrow. I'm not worried about where my body is. That's the first thing. Then I place my feet on the left side and I move my head so that my jaw is lined up. Now I'll just put down my bow down by my side. You know it doesn't matter because if I do that and I've got my bow anywhere, it doesn't matter because as soon as I put it up, you see it's not really being exactly aimed, but it, in general, as soon as I put it up, it's already kind of going in that direction. Okay, so it's not like a pre-aim where you see people, they stand 90 degrees and get all stiff, and then they start doing that before they draw. They're just torquing and twisting. Do it naturally. The arrow wants to go there, let the arrow go there. Now put your body where it will naturally go when you've drawn and get your head lined up. Now it doesn't matter. Put it up, bang, go, it's there. Okay, so that's an easy way to get your stance, quite natural. Now, the uh, first way that we're going to draw is the 7 eighth draw. So in doing it, again, it depends on getting that arrow all the way back there and then rolling straight here without moving our head and everything you know not leaning not moving the head so i'll show you what i mean oh, and the arrow tip is a little bit on the right side of the target but um, anyhow you know point the arrow and just line up your feet and your head and now when i draw I'm just going to put it slightly on the right, and when it comes back, it's going to be almost back, and then at the last second it will aim. So I just draw back, and right here, <laughs> right here, this is where it is, right? Bang. Okay, so that's how that one's done. Slide your arrow on. Point the arrow at the target. Now, move your feet and your head so that, that your jaw is lined up. Arrow on the right, and then just draw it until there's lots of pressure, let it come around, and off she goes. Okay, so that's one style. Now, the next style, we actually are going to lean until we get over the arrow. So that's the one where we Actually, we'll line it up the same way, arrow, you know, feet on the left, head. But then, we're just going to keep leaning until we find a magic spot where the arrow is lined up. So, let's see if you can see that. So, again, we're going to just generally point the arrow, move in behind the arrow, and then arrow tip on the right, and as we draw, we'll simply lean until we get it right back in place. Okay. So again, arrow on, move in behind it, put it slightly on the right. As you draw, lean until it looks straight. Just like so, okay? Now, the third way, that's the stretch it out. In the stretch it out, we're not concerned about our head uh, or, or leaning so much or anything like that. Basically, we're just 
feeling the pressure in our arms until it's stretched out and just hanging and then we'll move our eye over and aim. So to do the stretch out same line up point at the uh, at the target get your jaw and your feet and everything in place your heads in place now I'm going to just draw and I'm just going to let my my right arm hang now I'm going to just let her go I guess that's the best way to say it the uh, get your arrow on again Line it up, get your head and everything right, stretch it out, and just let it point at the target, and wango tango. Uh, so, those are the three basic ways. You're going to just use the pressure in your arm, look along, so your head moves last, or you're going to just lean over until it lines up on your jaw or you're going to stand up and allow the extreme pressure in the bow to just line it up at the last second that's when it will just roll and uh, that's about all I can tell you today so anyhow have a good night and sweet dreams <laughs> keep on Viking boys talk to you later